Oh boy. So I I just gotta get straight to it. Shout out to my my buddy, my homegirl, Lyrics Mom, aka Kiara, aka Kiki. Miss uh I'm gonna throw my draw and get drunk. Shout out to you girl. Um she actually been on she asked me to do a video on this particular topic and this is gonna be straight heat so i'ma just say it right now if you don't like to hear shut the fuck up or this shit is dumb or you don't like to be critiqued in any shape form or fashion get the fuck up out of here all right just right off the rip get the fuck out of this live show because this is not for you Okay, get the fuck out. All right, I, I don't got time for this bullshit. I don't got time for these soft motherfuckers that don't understand the, the conversation of debates. Shit gets, shit get real. It gets real and these are opinions. And again, if you don't like it, get the fuck up out of here. All right, so I'm just gonna be right off the head. The, re the, the reason why I want to talk about this, and this is just, I'm going to be short, you know, I'm, I'm uh, like, I'm still kind of uh, dealing with this sinus infection, but I want to go about 30 minutes. I can only give y'all about 30 to 45 minutes a day, so forgive me while I'm still fighting off this sinus infection, but I'm a, uh, I'm a little upset <laughs> with working, uh, so even when I'm ill, I still try to you know get out here and do some work uh i love this shit but <clears throat> um we gotta stop this bullshit all right that's just just right off the bed y'all are so full of shit a lot of people are so full of bullshit what the fuck are y'all even talking about half the time do you know what the fuck you talking about half the time and the reason why I'm saying this is like people use the word generational talent so fucking loosely. Do you even know what the fuck that means? Do I have to pull out a fucking dictionary for you people? Like, see, this this is y'all, y'all want on one hand, y'all want to be the motherfucker that critique, but you don't want to be critiqued. And then you get mad at me for saying shit in such a manner because your ass is wrong. And then you want me to back down because you said something fucking stupid or you did something fucking dumb. If y'all understood how many death threats I get, if y'all understand how many people that message me talking about they go kick my ass or my you shouldn't talk to people like I don't give a fuck, okay? I just want to let that be though. I don't give a fuck. Because at the end of the day, these are opinions. And I'm a man of opinions. But one thing that I do, I do my research. And when I state something, if you don't understand and if you haven't done your work, if you don't understand, if you haven't done your homework and you haven't done the research, you wouldn't catch on to what I'm saying right off the bat. Because a lot of motherfuckers love to do, they love to talk sports when they have done little to no research. Okay? A lot of people do that. You know, I try my best not to get to that point where I'm just making all, all these, you know, general fucking statements. Well, I haven't uh, speaking on things I have not done my research on. No, I'm not that guy. Me, I'm talking about me. I'm not that guy. So a lot of shit that I ask to speak on, I'm talking about I've done the research. Right? I've done the research on this. So I put these two motherfuckers at the bottom. Y'all see them at generational talent. So again. I'm not asking people to go to his Twitter account and all that shit and, you know, harass them. I ain't asking none of that shit. This is me critiquing a point. 
And if you want to take my video and critique it, by God, go ahead and do. Call me a fucking moron. Call me fucking stupid. I don't give a fuck. What this is? Straight Heat. The new series of rants from your boy, Mad Mike. The end. And the question I have for you guys, you ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining me. But what the hell does that even mean? What the hell does generational talent mean? Fuck you, Mucho. I don't sound like no goddamn Madea. All right. Fuck you. And, and I hope I hope I see your ass at the rear of the back of it. But I'm like, it's 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 like Maurice, how you doing? Xavier, Dre Murphy, Wallace Smith, and Tura Moody. Daniel Berry Sports was good. Everybody's in the chat was good. Appreciate it. But we use this damn generational talent. We just throw that shit out just like anybody that we like and this guy has ability. He has the ability to throw the ball 100 yards or whatever the hell. He may run a 4-4 or 4-2 speed at quarterback position or he's a quarterback and, you know, he, he gets a lot of interceptions or he has tremendous athletic ability. Everybody want to name him the next Deion Sanders. There's only one prime time. Prime time was a generational talent. There has been many corners in the league that could literally shut down the half of a fucking field. Quarterbacks were so afraid to throw to this guy's side in fear of him taking that bitch to the house. Deion Sanders basically created what we know today is the pit fucking six. Nobody in that position ever did that. Cause fear. No one did that. Deion Sanders made the pick six. He created the pick six. This dude is a living definition of a nightmare. You have the great Steve Young that said, Deion Sanders made you question whether or not this guy was actually open. Why? Because he studied his fucking craft. He studied your craft and he made you do things that you did not want to do this is what generational talent means generational talent means you actually put the shit on the field and it doesn't take you two three years to finally get it so when i see people that say caleb williams is a generational talent for fucking what? I've seen this bullshit out of him before. I've seen Caleb McGeary. I've seen Caleb before Caleb Williams. I've seen Caleb McGeary too. We we won't say he's a goddamn generational talent. Why? Because we've seen right tackles like that before. But all these people want to throw out this guy's a generation for what? What makes Caleb Williams and Justin Fields generational talent? If you compare him to another guy, obviously he's not a fucking generational talent. There has been no one like Peyton Manning before. Name a quarterback in the history of the game that you can say, yep, that guy's Peyton Manning. Name a quarterback in the league that we've seen that say, yep, that's Peyton Manning. Yep, this guy is Peyton Manning. Name another quarterback that we know that is Peyton Manning. 
I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait for you guys to say a, a, a quarterback that's in the league before and after. Have you seen anything like Peyton Manning ever, ever again since? I will look again. I will sit here and wait for you guys to think about this. Since since when have we seen another Peyton a, a, a Peyton Manning? I've seen a mobile quarterback before, before and after Mike Vick. Is Mike Vick a, a generation talent? Hell no, because I've seen that before. I've seen Steve Young. Steve Young at one point in time before Mike Vick, he was he he took over Randall Cunningham as the uh as one of uh, the most rush yards from a quarterback position we've seen. I've seen Fran Tarkenton. We've seen Mike and Fran Tarkenton. We've seen this before. We've seen mobile quarterbacks. Dick Knight, Train Lane. I didn't see a lot of those. I didn't see a lot of those. Uh, not Knight, Train Lane, but we've seen Sammy Ball. Not me personally, but we've seen a quarterback that was able to to run the ball before. So to say Mike Vick is a like he's a generational talent, that's not even correct. A generational talent is a guy that we've never seen do the thing that he's done. You look at right now, you're talking about a generational talent. This is what Ronald Acuna has done. We haven't seen a guy that has 60 stolen bases and 40 plus fucking home runs in a year. And then he turned around, he's a gold glover on top of it. This dude gets to 30 home runs and 60 fucking stolen bases every fucking year. We haven't seen this before. People don't have not done the things that Ronald Acuna has done in baseball. We've never seen a guy come in and dominate the way Michael Jordan dominated in an absolute crazy era. Where you have the top players, some of the top players of all time. This dude was literally 6-0 in NBA Finals. We haven't seen that before. This is what we're talking about, generational talent. We putting these fucking, we putting these college guys and these guys in the NFL on a fucking pedestal and say they generational talent for what? They're fucking losers. Justin Fields is a loser and he's a horrible loser. He sucks. Caleb McGarry's on the sideline crying. Not because he won. He crying because he lost. And we putting these monocles on these type of guys. Why? Because we like them. These are some bum ass players that we putting a fucking we putting these, this 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 image and putting crowns on their heads for fucking what? Why does Caleb Williams deserve to have a a crown? What has he done? What makes him a generational talent? We've seen what he can do before. You literally comparing him to a, a guy like Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is a generational talent because he's doing things the quarterback has never done. In the first couple of years, this dude has went to, what, four straight NFC championship, AFC championship games in a row. We've never seen this ever in his fucking, in the history of football, we've never seen quarterbacks do what Patrick Mahomes is doing. This dude is the living definition of generational. Why? Because quarterbacks have never done what he's done. But we putting these crowns on these clowns for what? This dude is in the fucking sideline with lip gloss on. We clown, we're crowning the guy, because we're, clown, we're crowning him. He's not even the best fucking quarterback in his own class. I would much rather take Jaden Daniels over him. Are you fucking kidding me? He doesn't have the size. He's a Kyler Murray clone that's being compared to who? 
Patrick Mahomes. How the fuck are you going to compare a guy that you claim to be generational? You're comparing him to Patrick Mahomes. Anybody want to look at Patrick Mahomes' numbers? Do I have to do that, people? Do I have to pull up Patrick Mahomes' numbers in college? The dude was balling in college. He was putting up numbers. So when you see what he is in college, this is the reason why the Kansas City Chiefs and Andy Reid went at them because he could make those NFL throws in college. He was making those NFL throws in college. But what, just like every other sport, if you don't have the proper team and you don't have the proper coaching, you are not going to be in the spot, in the spotlight. He did not. He played for Texas, Texas Tech. Okay. And we all know in the land of college football, Texas Tech is not a team and not an organization, a school that is known for winning. So you're not going to get the coverage that you're going to get from an Alabama, a Georgia, a LSU, a Clemson. You're not going to get that. But we want to put Justin Fields and fucking and, and Caleb Williams on a pedestal. We use this term way too fucking loosely with no results. These guys have done nothing to go into this type of respect. It's disrespectful to use the word generational talent when he's being compared to anybody and everybody else. There has been nothing like Peyton Manning since. There has been nothing like Patrick Mahomes. Now, if you want to say those guys are generational talent, we're still looking for a Peyton Manning. We're still looking for the next quarterback to be that, and we still have not seen it. It's going on damn near three decades and we still looking for the same Peyton Manning. This dude will call it audibles in his rookie year. I don't think people understand how significant that is for a rookie quarterback in his in his first season to be making audibles and calls in his rookie season. Have total command of his offense. and sole responsibility in putting everybody in position. This is not normal. Matt Ryan didn't even have that. It's not normal for a quarterback in his first, what, five, six years in, 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 in the NFL to go to five straight in the AFC championships? This is not fucking normal. That's not normal to see a Peyton Manning and a Patrick Mahomes doing the things that they're doing. It's not normal. It's the reason why Joe Montana is regarded as the greatest of all time. Because they didn't have rules. Okay? And this, this is a direct shot at Tom Brady. He didn't have rules catered to his abilities or the, the, in a, the, the lack of abilities. He didn't have rules catered to him. You can't hit a fucking, you couldn't hit a guy below the fucking knees. You couldn't hit a guy high. You can't do anything. You can't touch Peyton Manning. You couldn't, I mean, you couldn't touch a guy like uh, uh, Tom Brady. You can't touch this fucking guy. But we want to call him the GOAT. Why? You change the rules, why? Because Peyton, uh, uh, because Tom Brady got hurt. Boo fucking who? You change the games and the rules of the games because your golden boy got hurt. But y'all want to call him a generational talent. He's not a fucking generational talent. Is he talented? Yes. But give me, don't give me this bull crap about how a guy is generational when well, we've seen him before. We've seen a Tom Brady before. 
a pure pocket passer. Yeah, his name is Dan Marino. Dan Marino was doing things to do went to a Super Bowl his rookie fucking year. You want to talk about generational talent? That's what generational talent looks like. Doing things that is is abnormal. A Warren Moon coming in. An absolute stud. When it wasn't cool for a quarterback to be non-mobile. Warren Moon could be a pass a, 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 a passing quarterback. To be a, a, a pure pocket quarterback, that wasn't that's that wasn't something that we looked at. And we frowned upon that shit. That wasn't normal to see a black quarterback actually stay in the pocket and want to throw. No, that wasn't that that, that wasn't cool then. And Rudabaker stop stop like, like oh we still talking about just the fields. Yeah, we are. Don't try to act like your ding ding ain't hard. You know, yo, you, you about to bust on you in your fucking nut. You about to bust on none of your own draws. Because we talking about uh, Justin Fields. Now all of a sudden you don't want to talk about Justin Fields. Why is that, sir? Why all of a sudden you don't want to talk about Justin Fields? Why? Man might be might be talking about the truth. He fucking sucks. That's why. Are you finally coming to the realization that Justin Fields might just be ass? We use this, we use these words way too loosely. Somebody tell me right now what's the definition of a of a generational talent? Because from my understanding, it's something or someone that has talent we've never seen before. Julius Peppers, he's another one of those guys. Like he was a freak athlete at that position. A LT. He was ahead of his freaking times. Mr. AKA, Mr. Lawrence Taylor. All right, we, we so we are so quick to just throw these terms out and know it like you just want to say, man, we're gonna pass up on the generational talent because of off the field issues. Huh? So when does off the field issue not matter? You think it's okay for football players to come in here and try to embarrass the entire league? Because a lot of these players, a lot of these players, they very sensitive about how their sports is portrayed. Just ask a, uh, just ask a wrestler. You're not going to embarrass the integrity of the game. I know this is not going to be. I, I know this is not going to be a popular saying, but look, how you as, as a player, as a defensive player, and just a player that actually loves the game and wants to be looked at as as Dean as the NFL is a tough guy sport. How are you going to protect your quarterback when he got lip gloss on? Pink lip gloss on. How are you going to explain to the media that this guy's a real tough guy, but he's here he he shaking his he he his sh shaking his tail feather? How 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 are you as a defensive player just going to say, "Yep, this is a real tough guy. My guy's a man's man." I'm just saying. A lot of you guys have played the sport. This is a man's, man's sport. 
Not to say that people, you know, alternative lifestyles don't play the game, but look, when you on that football field, this is all about the best of the best, the strongest of the strongest, and the men of men, uh, the men amongst men. This is what the game of football is all about. And I need to know that my quarterback is not going to be on the sideline fucking hugging his mama and sucking her nipples. Okay? I don't want his, him crying to his mama on the sideline because he threw an interception. I don't want my quarterback to be sitting in the, in the, in, in the media rolling his eyes. Or throwing the team under the bus. I want to know that my guy is going to be there for us through the thick and the thin through the ups and downs. So when I look at a guy like Caleb Williams, I already see, fuck no, I don't want him anywhere near my locker room because he's already shown the inability to handle the public, the public media and the fans. Like I said, I don't, like, I don't give a shit at the end of the day. I don't want my quarterback out here with lip gloss on. Just me. I'm just saying. Maybe y'all like Salsa Santana's, you know, uh, 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 lining up as y'all quarterback, but I don't want it. I need to know when it's time to get dirty and I need somebody to bust ahead I need to know if you're going to be there. And this is the mentality of football. I need to know when shit gets rough and shit gets tough that you're not going to throw me under the bus and you're not going to look out for, you're going to look out for us instead of looking out for yourself. And what I seen from Caleb Williams, I don't want him nowhere near. Maybe that's y'all. But it ain't me. You're going to have to go to war for me. If you're going to be a part of AFN, you're going to have to go for me and every person that's affiliated with us. If you with us, you with us. Period. The end. Because I'm going to get that same energy. You come at the one, you're going to come at the all. And I need for as as far as my quarterback, as far as my head coach, as far as my owner, as far as the, the, the general manager, the team president, they need to know that you're going to do whatever it takes to make sure that our organization is protected and we have each other's backs. So when I see a guy that's laying on the sideline whining and crying and doing backflips and oh look, I don't need all that. Look, I, look, y'all, look, I don't give a damn if y'all stay away from this topic. Because what I'm doing, I'm saying exactly what y'all thinking, but nobody has the fucking guts to say it. You know you damn well don't need your quarterback out here wearing fucking lip gloss. The first thing, if Desmond Ritter would have had lip gloss on, y'all would have ate him fucking alive. Let's keep that real. What if Matt Ryan would have had lip gloss on? Why do certain players, why do certain players get a pass and others don't? It's a free country, right? Why why do certain players get a, a pass for being, you know, quote quote themselves and others don't? Y'all said Mr. Hadbreed ain't got, he don't represent that Falcons culture. Y'all said Mr. Uh, uh, Des Marita don't represent the culture.
Y'all would have ate him. Y'all know damn well. Look, I don't want to hear that shit, Aruda Baby. Don't tell me that all his players, you haven't talked to all his, his coaches, uh, all his teammates. Let, let's get that bullshit out of here. They haven't given you that. Look, they, look, let's, let's be real. Let me, let me just see a vote. I just, I want to see three, four, five people answer this one question to me. And I want you guys to be as honest as you quite possibly can. You don't have to repeat anything and everything I said. Because what I said is what I said. This is my thoughts. A lot, uh, again, a lot of people just don't want to touch these uh, subject matters. If your quarterback was crying on the sideline because he had a bad game, and he was in the side, uh, he in the stands hugging his mama. What's the first thing that y'all would have said to yourself? To yourself, and be honest. Be honest about it. If your quarterback is, he had a horrible game. He just lost in a dramatic fashion because he threw interceptions. He was the reason why the team played bad. What is? What would? What would be your first thought about that guy? And let's be honest. I'm, uh, I'm, 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 uh, I, I, okay. Come on. I know I got fed five brave souls. I'm not asking for 15 people. I'm just asking four to five. Look, if you got five people, I get two people to answer this question. If your quarterback was on the sideline crying every time he did something bad, what is your thoughts? Let's keep it real. All this politically correct, man, get the fuck up out of here with this bullshit. Everybody want to be politically correct in front of the camera and on social media. But soon y'all behind the confines, y'all own your closed doors and your home, this when the real true y'all get out. Clark Field was on that team, that Utah team that beat USC's and made them quit in the third quarter by being physical with them. USC got smoked like a pack of cool cigarettes. Tony Wright, thank you, my brother. He didn't get off the tent soon enough. If it's the NFL, I got a problem with the college players stay crying to their emotions. See, Jay, I don't believe that shit. Any college player that's on that crying because he lost, they soft. I, I look, I, I'm asking for your thoughts. I don't give a fuck about what everybody else possibly could. If you are a football player and your quarterback is on the sideline hugging his mama when we get our ass beat what are you going through your mind you are here going to war putting your your your, your body on the line and your quarterback standing on the sideline crying jeffrey redlip i would have said he's soft ghost pepper was good Here, here, here come that uh, this uh, uh, D I C K rider. Shaman tissue soft. So let me ask y'all then, what the fuck are you in here for? Get the fuck up out of here. What the fuck you in here for? Get the fuck out. Why the fuck are you in here listening to a nigga that's got ain't speaking nothing but nonsense? 
what the fuck you 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 ready here to tell the fbi you want to tell what you gonna run to another content creator and tell him see man mike man this is why i don't like man mike he be cursing people a lot and call people stupid Unfucking subscribe this channel is every one of our live shows are set to subscriber mode so in order to comment on these live shows you have to be subscribed to the channel so do me a favor mr aruda Bega and josh gillum get the fuck out Because my thoughts about a quarterback, that's true, by the way. Nobody said as I've been making up shit. Did, how many people, it, raise your hand if you saw Caleb Williams in the fucking, on the fucking sideline hugging his damn mama. Not once, but he, he, he's crying on the sideline two, three times that, the whole season. Desmond Ritter held it together when you guys at every freaking wake and moment tried to destroy this guy's character, tried to call him soft, tried to like do everything to make sure that you don't want him anywhere near Atlanta. Say he doesn't represent the culture. Who the hell are you to say who represents the fucking culture? Who the hell are you sitting at home on the bench to say Desmond Ritter ain't it? Half of y'all can't even throw a damn ham sandwich five feet. But you up here telling me de what Desmond Ritter can't do. Half of y'all like about 400 pounds, five feet, 400 pounds, but you trying to tell somebody else what they can't damn do. You can't even get off the fucking couch without fucking breathing like a damn slave. Half of y'all have never done anything athletic in your in your life, but you up here crapping on a guy like this and Ritter. Why? Because you don't like him. He doesn't represent the black culture. He doesn't remind you of Michael Vick. Get your bitch ass out of here. I said what the fuck I just said. If you don't like what I said, unfucking subscribe. And I would like some of my admins, if you feel as though, as moderators, uh, excuse me, but if you, moderators, if you don't like where the conversation is going, I respect your opinions. But this, this shit right here, Cause we got a lot of fuck boys out here. I'ma just I'ma just keep that real. We got a lot of fuck boys out here. And I'm fucking heated. And but guys that's out here really doing their fucking job. Uh Matt Ryan did this shit for 14 years and y'all shit on this man every fucking waking moment. This man gave his life, his body, his time to this organization, and the fans hated him. Brought this man close to tears. On Cam Newton's, Cam Newton called y'all out on this, and y'all hated on Matt Ryan. Fourteen year, sixty five thousand passing yards, several NFL records. Still holds the record for one of the greatest, the highest rated Super Bowl in in history. And y'all hate him. Y'all ran him out of town because he didn't fit your culture but you up and put these crowns on these clowns that sitting on the sideline crying and whining winning 11 games out of 50 plus games y'all put crowns on these guys but the guys who actually putting in work and actually doing the work y'all don't got no respect for them but Mike is going too far. Oh, Mike is going too far. Mike is making up stuff. Somebody tell me why I'm making up anything. It, are these not facts? Are these not things that actually happen? You're weak.
Get the fuck out of here. I want to hear that bullshit now. Like, right, get the fuck out of here, man. Motherfucker can't, he can't even throw a goddamn out route, but y'all up here talking about he generational talent. Get the fuck out of here with this weak crap. Hey, excuse my language. This is straight heat, and I'm, I, I just got to go in because this shit, this, this is a fucking atrocity. This is a freaking atrocity. I'm gonna I'm try to keep it down from this point on, but this is absolutely an atrocity to see so many players get put on these pedestals for literally nothing. He's done nothing. This guy has yet to be even drafted and we're labeling him a generational talent because he looks like something. I can look like whoever. People compare me to damn Richard Pryor. Motherfucker, I ain't Richard Pryor. My, you sound like Richard Pryor. Yeah, I may sound like him, but who the, look, I ain't fucking Richard Pryor. Never gonna be him. Oh, my, you look like Kwame Brown. Uh, I've been compared to a lot of motherfuckers, but I'm not them. Justin Field is a fucking loser, and we give him more chance, chance after chance after chance to lose, to show you nothing but being a lahu as a her. And when you got these uh, analysts, and this is the most embarrassing part about being this, uh, the, uh, the, 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 these, these analysts who actually played the game, they know the truth, but they, look, they, they are so driven by being on ESPN that they totally lose facts of reality. The reality is he freaking sucks. The reality is this guy have yet to pass for 2,500 passing yards in a whole season. Oh, his teammates love him. Name a teammate that's going to go out of his way to crap all on his player. That's a brotherhood. For the most part, it has to be completely, it has to be something drastic for them to go, for those dudes to go out of their way and say, nope, Caleb Williams is not that guy. You really very seldom see an issue or, or a, a moment where players absolutely crap all on their, their former team, their, their, you know, their teammates. It just doesn't happen. Even in an extreme case, like, like, like a guy like A.B., Antonio Brown, you know, he crapped on certain guys, but he at the same time he praised other guys. So very seldom you get a, a disgruntled. You have a player that's gonna go out of his way to say, "Nope, all guy wasn't that guy." I'm not gonna drive shit crazy. This is what the fuck I do. Okay. Let, let me let me let me get this let me get this straight. Right? Let me let me get let me let me let y'all know I'm with the shit. So when you with the shit, you don't get tired of you don't drive yourself crazy. Mad Mike is literally Mad Mike. This is who I am. I ain't gonna drive myself crazy for shit. I'm control of who the what the fuck I say and when I say it. But it's a moment, it's, it's like some of these fans just got to get a reality check. And most of them, they got a problem with me is because they don't want to be checked on the stuff that they know is bullshit. I'm not going to run away from no heat. I'm not going to run away from any moment. One motherfucker call me out or they don't call me out or we sit down and have a good discussion. I don't run from the moment. I sit right there like a man and stay in that spot. Take whatever's given to me. And I can I can say that with all honesty. I take my heat. I take my punishment. I take my verbal lashing. But the fact of the matter is, appreciate people. Because 
at the end of the day, we're never going to see a Mike Vick and we're never going to see another Matt Ryan. There's no guarantee that the Falcons are going to get back to a Super Bowl. <laughs> so Falcons saying you can, you can spend the rest of your life seeking that that, that that feeling of wanting to win a championship. But chances are there's a very good chance that the Atlanta Falcons will never, ever get back to a Super Bowl. And as a fan, would I stop watching the Atlanta Falcons because they did not get to a Super Bowl? Absolutely not. Because I love the game. I love the team. But more importantly, I love the game. I enjoy football. And just because my team isn't on top doesn't mean I'm going to stop watching. Some of you people don't even love the game for the game. Y'all just love the game to see somebody run fast. To see big plays. I love the game. I like the ups and the downs. I like to see how players react when things aren't going their way. Anybody remember this guy named Jesse Tuggle? Yeah, we've actually met Jesse Tuggle before. Thank you, Drew Trace. Uh, true statement. Mad Mike ain't gonna drive himself crazy because he already nuts. Uh, that, that's the truth. See, uh, see, I love you for that, brother. By the time somebody fucking gets it, you get it. I live in the land of crazy. Okay? My my family already know I'm fucked up. Everybody in the family know I'm fucked up in the head. But 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 the the issue at hand and, and let me be clear about this. Like I said, I'm 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 gonna, I'm gonna try to calm it down because like at the end of the day, man, you you fans are just so unappreciative. Y'all so busy trying to look at the next grade and be the best team ever, you don't even appreciate the process of getting there. The reason why a lot of players break down emotionally when they finally, do you understand why Michael Jordan was laying on that, laying on the floor, hugging that championship, hugging that ball when he finally won his championship? Do you understand the pain that he went through? Get Lily getting his head busted. Scotty Pippen getting thrown into into the crowd, breaking his nose. These dudes literally got physically assaulted on the on basketball court by the Detroit Pistons. They literally got their ass kicked. People literally hated Michael Jordan. Why? Because he was that damn good. Do you understand what it's like to go through that grind when everything and everybody is against you and you finally get to that point and say, I am number one. That's what sports and life is all about going going through the absolute worst of the worst the falcons have been some of the worst and i have been some of the worst moments so when we finally win that championships i'm going to be i'm going to be straightforward with you one of the worst moments of my life wasn't 1998 one of the worst moments in my life as a sports fan was looking at the disappointment on those guys' faces in 2016-17. Because all the pain, the jokes, nobody believed in this organization. Nobody believed it. Even you fans who said that you fans, y'all didn't show up to it until they got to the NFC Championship. 
do people realize that nobody really the fans didn't even show up and sell out the playoff games at y'all didn't even show up until he got to the NFC championship a lot of y'all didn't even believe in the Falcons until they actually got to the Super Bowl Fizz got traded for a cup of noodles and a pap smear. <laughs> like, come on, bro. What are we doing? Like, what are we what are we doing? Like, what the hell are we doing? We putting these guys that have absolutely no reason. We have no reason to be worshiping these guys. They ain't healed the sick. They ain't fed the poor. They ain't done none of that shit. But we putting crowns on their head when they've done absolutely nothing to even gain that type of respect. We just give respect to people who don't even fucking do anything. You're a freaking loser. How a quarterback that has yet to throw for 2,500 yards is a generational talent. How is a quarterback, name a quarterback that you saw crying on the sideline that's been drafted. Right now, anybody, name a quarterback in the NFL that you have known to visually see him on the sideline crying because he lost the game. That he was the main reason as to why they were losing. I, I'll wait for it. No, it was not. That was that look for one, uh, Dre. That's not even true because that that it was not sold out. Playoff games go on sale way before that. Okay, they eventually sold out. Okay, let, let me let me let me explain something to y'all about uh, how uh, sales happen. Once a team is. This this is how this is this is see this I'm about to explain something to y'all that probably y'all have no clue about. You do understand that once a team has made the playoffs, that playoff tickets go on sale immediately. Y'all knew that. Did you know that once a team makes the playoffs, that all tickets go on sale immediately? Did y'all, maybe y'all didn't know that, but that's actually what happens. Once a team makes it to the playoffs, it doesn't take them two to three weeks to sell tickets out, to sell those games out. Because guess what? Once you, once you make it, it immediately, fans, they immediately say, it took the Falcons fans a long time to sell those tickets out. Why? Because the fan base never gave a damn no way. Man, they just gonna get to the playoffs and they gonna lose anyway. As a matter of fact, I have several sources because one, my cousin actually works at the biz. He's an employee at the biz. So I like I literally have inside information. A lot of those things they eventually they had to they, they I actually had to uh, kind of bribe people into doing that. Boy, Rutabaga, boy, your coochie is bleeding. God damn. 
Do you care about anything inside of a quarterback? Motherfucker, this ain't the nation of Islam. All you care about is a black quarterback. What, like, who the fuck cares about a quarterback? This is about the this, this is about the truth of the matter. This dude is a fucking clown, and y'all praise these fucking clowns. He's a whole sideshow, and y'all putting these guys on, on y'all putting these guys on a pedestal for being a fucking sh a clown show. He's done nothing. This, this is the stuff that drives me insane. So hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you're new to the channel. Tell your friend to come chat. Falcons football with your boy Mad Mike. But we're going to go in, in full detail with this particular topic. I already went over my uh, 30 minutes and I said I was going to get... But we go. We, this is not the end of this. This is not the end of this conversation. Sam gonna have this. Sam gonna have us speak on it. K Styles. Well, we gonna speak on this. Cause we gonna get to the bottom of this. That's not true at all. About oh, all the games were sold out. No, all the games were eventually sold out. But unlike you know the the pan the Packers the Packers they are look. Anytime the Packers fans. Anytime they make the playoffs, they sell out the, the same fucking day. They don't waste no time by selling out their playoffs. It took our it, it took our damn fans almost two weeks. A week to sell out playoff tickets. But we claim to be we, we claim to be fans of the team and shit like that. If you if you really represent your team the way you say you are, you really a fan. Why should it take you two weeks to to go to a playoff game or to sell out playoff tickets or to play out to sell out pay, playoff games? It shouldn't take you that long. Like I said, this is something that I have I have I have inside information on this. Not true at all. I don't want that little bitch nowhere near my Atlanta Falcon team. Aruda Baker. I don't want that little bitch nowhere near my team. Caleb Williams ain't coming to Atlanta and nor do I want him. You wouldn't be saying that he was on your team. I don't want that bitch nowhere near my team. I don't want no crying ass quarterback on my fucking team. Because how we grew up and how real football fans grew up, I don't want to see my damn player crying on the fucking sidelines. I'd rather see him throw a goddamn bottle at a fan or something like that to see him on the sideline crying in tears and shit. This ain't a fucking playoff game. This ain't the Super Bowl. So what the fuck you crying for? This ain't the Super Bowl. This ain't the national championship. I got more respect for a player to cry during the national championship than this a regular game. What you crying for? You did it. You didn't play well. And not only did he cry one time, I don't have a problem with him crying one time. He cried several times. Pouting on the sideline because he didn't play well. He's pouting and crying on the sidelines when he didn't play well. You did it. And we putting generational talent on motherfuckers who are crying on the sideline. Somebody tell me what the definition of a what the definition of a generational talent because maybe y'all got something different. Maybe, maybe some people got you know a different definition of what a generational talent is. Maybe maybe that's the problem.
Maybe, maybe it's me. Maybe I got, maybe my world has been turned upside down and I'm not doing things the right way. Did you go to games in six, 2016? See, here at Deflection shit, I asked you a simple fucking question. I asked you a simple fucking question. Oh, did you go to the game? Yes, I did. Now answer the fucking question. Stop acting like a little bitch and answer the fucking question. I answered the question. Yes, I went to games in 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and I plan on going to 24. Next fucking question. Everybody want to be everybody want to be labeled a, a, a the best fan in the world or call themselves the best fan in the world because guess what? I want to be critical of my team and I just want to tell it like it is. Come on, come on, y'all. Come, come on, let's, let's, let's get it. Nah, I, I'd rather not, because I know Dre gonna be right over there. He, he'll probably take this message and clip it and, and, and send it to one of his buddies. So, uh, the question that I have You you literally just deflected in at the in the moment of saying deflection. We're talking about Falcons fans in their entirety. Maybe it's my fault because you can't think. Maybe that's my fault because you can't think or understand this is not an individual shot. This is a fan base shot. So if you get shot at my shot then that's your fault i'm not responsible for your feelings i clearly stated that atlanta falcons fans claim that they are so loyal to the logo even see loyal, loyalty goes with the good and the bad you can't be you can't claim to be a loyal fan and won't support the team through the good and the bad you can't claim to be such a, a, a fan, a, a loyal fan of the logo. And all you do is talk about how pitiful a guy is day after day after day after day after week after week after week. We here through thick and thin, the ups and downs. We're talking about the positives. We're talking about the neg negatives about every person, how they can get better, what's the issue, what's not the issue. But a person that only wants to attend games because they're winning, those ain't fans, bro. Y'all can say whatever y'all want to, but you're not a fan if all the, everything that come out your mouth is about how fucking terrible a guy is. Every, every freaking, look, we talk about this all the time. Soon as the quarterback, uh, soon as, soon, soon as the quarterback, uh, uh, soon as the quarterback conversation come up, that's when y'all start running to the floor. We've done, I've done so many videos. I've done so many lives. Nobody, hardly a lot of, and, and this is not everybody, but a lot of y'all don't even show up until we talk, start talking about a quarterback. I haven't seen you in the live in quite some time. Mr. Dre's true statement.
see, it, guys like Dre, true statement, can understand what eventually sold out. I mean, and that that's a whole nother conversation in itself. But again, we gonna if we y'all got some questions, I'll take some questions right now and let Mr. Dre True State. Uh haha. -ha. Yeah. Mr. Dre True Statement. Guy got some questions. But like I said before, man, we got to stop using these damn generational talents. And like we lose that. We use that term so loosely now. <sighs> hey, y'all, let me ask y'all this. <laughs> let me let me ask y'all. Let me ask y'all uh, a question. Is most of my core most of my uh shows about quarterbacks? But if people that actually watch this channel every day are most of my most of my videos about the quarterback position. Oh, clown is a as a panther what the hell are you talking about is that Rudy Baker that that's he went to, he signed with the panthers true pants tv you do, if you have true pants tv do you have a uh, channel no we we actually go in detail Mad Mike, I have a segment that called Ask Mad Mike. Ask Mad Mike is a a segment where I answer questions from the people. Most of the questions and most of the shows are surrounded by the question that you ask. So if it seems as though that Mike likes to only talk about the quarterback position, it's because I'm giving you guys what you want to listen to. Our show is the center around the people. So even that, I got plenty of videos on this channel that's, I mean, I've, I've, I've done several videos uh, and, and a couple of them, um, we just did a show led what, the other night, we were talking about AJ Terrell and the defense. So I can see it, man. Nah, that's not even true. Just, just do me a favor, like, no, bro, like, just don't, like, you don't have to watch, like, why, like, just, just go. Michael Walker, I think it's a mix of everything and shit, talking to haters. Yeah. True Pants TV. I, 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 like I said, I appreciate you, my brother. Let me see if you, uh, if you got it, like I said, if you got a channel or anybody like that, go ahead and shout yourself out. Most of my rants have been, but no, that ain't even true. It's like this, see, this is, this is the perfect example of somebody who don't watch and they only watch when the topic at hand is something that they've, they've sent it around. We got several shows on there and I've been on everybody's show and we talk about multiple things. But somehow I've been labeled a quarterback guy. <laughs> Walter Lies, I, I I appreciate your honesty. And like I said, look, I I take it. Like I said, we literally just did a show Monday about AJ Terrell, and I've done several videos. Just did a couple of them on uh, Jared Verse, uh, and we actually going later on tonight on the heavy hitters, and we're going to talk about the draft picks. So it's like this, this is what I mean about people who claim to be fans 
of the team, but they only focus on the quarterback position and the the the, the videos that they watch is centered around quarterback. So they say, hey Mike, all the thing you talk about is the quarterback. So I answer you guys' questions about the quarterback. Thank you, Tony. A lot of people are just soft and cannot take criticism and are really sensitive. Some parents are raised. <laughs> and like I said, man, look, I'm a look, I'm a man's man. I'm gonna sit there and I'm gonna take my verbal lashing. Y'all see me take my verbal lashing. Y'all seen me get on several shows where people came at me and I just sat there and I listened to them. So that's not been one instance where Mad Mike has not taken a verbal lashing. I give death threats and uh, uh, I give death threats and, and, and get threatened to get beat up when we go to training camp all the time. And these same people that I see out in public too. So I look, I can take it. Oh, AFN can take it. We ready. We ready. We ready. Yeah, we ready. We stay ready. Nah, you don't watch you don't watch all our stuff because you just made a general statement that's not true at all. We answer people's questions. You focus on the quarterback position. We don't. I don't think you went in enough, Mike. I played with the NFL and NBA talent before. Caleb Williams and Justin Fields, like high school quarterback, both the NBA and NFL soft as baby shit. Xavier and C, that's the same, brother. I come from that type of family. My family is, <laughs> my, my family, I come from an athletic background. You know what I'm saying? My brother, look, look, it's, it's, it's a lot of stuff. <laughs> And I've been privileged to be, you know, the sick next to great players and players that we've seen, you know, play before. One of the guys, like I said, one of the guys, Chuck Smith, one of the guys, Terrence Mathis, other guys like TJ Pollan, who has, you know, seen the, the greatest of the greatest. And we, we I've picked his brain about NFL players and what he's seen. And it's 60 plus years, 50 plus years living and being a journalist. I've, I've sat down with these players, uh, these people, and they talk about these players. I can have conversations with these people. So when people tell me, when people say things about l using these terms of generational talent, when it's based on nothing, these guys are ass. Nobody wanted him. Can the Falcons make it uh, in all honesty? Um, that's a good question because I actually talked about this also. <laughs> Mr. Dre 2 statement that said I only talk about quarterbacks. No, I'm a quarterback, so I give you insight on a quarterback. <laughs> quarterback with the first position. No, wide receiver was the first, first position. Uh, and then I went to quarterback. Um, but he initially wanted me to be the quarterback, so he trained me first, but the first position, he wanted me to, uh, uh, Isaiah, uh, he, Coach Isaiah, he actually wanted me to play quarterback, but he wanted me to learn uh, mentally about, like, what, like, being the mind space as far as uh, quarterback. You ever see pictures, like in baseball? If they want you to do certain things, they want you to uh not not pitch, but like in football and baseball and whatnot, they want you to play all different types of uh, positions and stuff like that to kind of get an understanding of what it takes uh, for to be a successful and what that position uh, goes into that mentality and whatnot. So basically, they want you to be a wide receiver and think like a wide receiver at the quarterback position. Not all quarterbacks have that ability, but if you come in like I did, you know, I, I ran about a four three eight 
Uh, and at that time, I, I definitely wasn't running the four three. I burned about a four five. Like the, I think I was thirteen. So I was running like a four four five, four five at like eight uh, thirteen. But like that's that's the first thing I played where I received, and then I converted to a quarterback. But he wanted me to to get you know the mindset of being a wide receiver uh, and a quarterback to have that relation relationship with a quarterback uh, wide receiver to think to think alike. Yeah, I, I look, bro. We get death threats around here. That's what a lot of people don't get. But, like I said, yeah, we've gotten death threats, dog. Uh, but that's that's all good. That happens when you know you're doing this type of stuff that come with the territory. Um, but like I said. The, the 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 thing is this conversation man it's all about you know we got to stop using these these terms so loosely let people earn it you know what i'm saying earn somebody's respect don't just give that shit out just because you like this person you got to make people earn that respect these guys have done nothing to earn this type of adulation and respect the reason why a lot of these a lot of these football stars, like look at Ben Simmons, for example. Y'all label him the next Michael uh, uh, Magic Johnson when he done nothing. He's done nothing. So, like I said before, again, check us out tonight. We're going to talk about other things outside of the quarterback positions since Dre True Statement uh, says that Mike only talks about the quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Dre True Statement. Uh, he says we only talk about the quarterbacks over here. But um, and like I said, these guys get so much adulation and praise because they super athletic. Since when guys getting praised for being super athletic? Because you're super athletic, like this what we doing? So because you like Justin Fields? Because he played at the University of Georgia. He deserves, like, for what? Y'all crap on Dez Ritter for doing exactly what he's doing, but only one of them is generational and another was trash. How that make, make, make that make sense for me? Yeah. Make make that make sense. We have a show called The Heavy Hitters Live. All right. So T-H-E-E -E, Heavy Hitters Live channel. We're going to go live um, tonight. Um, Walter. And like I said, we look. Mad Mike Sports is exactly what it, what it is. All right. Mad Mike Sports is exactly what it is. You're going to get um, harsh. Uh, you're going to get a mixture of rents and a mixture of in-depth analysis on here. So, like I said, this channel ain't for the weak-minded. I like what we do is not for the weak-minded. The heavy hitters is more prof uh, professional approach. Um, very little cursing over there, um, and we just go in depth in football. That's more so of a. Um, you know, NFL, uh, uh, that's more of an NFL approach to uh, uh, the football. Because like I said, uh, 
And like I said before, uh, you want in-depth analysis, the Heavy Hitters is channel for you. Uh, Mad Mike Sports, like I said, I'm here to answer questions. So uh, Mad Mike Sports is me personally on giving the uh, the people who subscribe, who follow the channel, y'all ask a question about whomever the player may be, i make the video. So a lot and most, about 95% of our videos are on Mad Mike Sports, okay? On Mad Mike Sports is centered around what people have asked. So if you see a lot of people, if you see a lot of videos about a quarterback, it's because that's what y'all asking for. So this is news. I do all the news updates um, of everything that happens. But Mad Mike Sports is mostly about giving the people what they want uh, and answering their questions. So again, uh, that's all I got to say about that. All right, and Tony Wright, love you, my brother. Dre, Dre Murphy, True Statement, Walter Lies. Um, I hope I said that right. True Pence TV, Xavier Littman, Mucho, and fuck you, Mucho. Uh, Southside Therapist, ATL. Uh, uh, Aruda, Jordan Bell, Bo, uh, I hope that's it. I, I, I hope that's a Bo Wing. Uh, what the hell? Larry's mom, I appreciate it about for joining us. But hit us up tonight on the Heavy Hitter live channel. Um, I'm gonna have you pray for me before the show because I probably don't did enough cursing for the whole year 2000. And 24, but like I said, this is Mad Mike Sports. Uh, it's just a small part of who I am, you know. I can actually have a conversation with our country people, uh, but Mad Mike Sports is my freedom to do whatever the fuck I feel. <laughs> All right, so again, man, I appreciate everybody for joining us. Um, but like I said, man, please keep up those comments, keep up the comments, keep up the asking the questions about every position, all right every position every player no matter if it's it, it doesn't have to be atlanta falcon team um and like i said tonight we're gonna give our thoughts on a couple of guys i actually got um uh a player that i think is kind of interesting i don't know if he's going to be a top uh 100 player but i i do see something in him uh that is interesting intriguing for me but you got to uh, check us out tonight. Me, Jew Talk Sports. Um, you can catch Jew Talk Sports every Wednesday, 11 a.m., okay? Every Tuesday, 11 a.m., all right? Also, every day at 11 a.m. on Mad Mike Sports, you will have a video, all right? I will have a video, so subscribe. 11 a.m. every day, seven days a week, I will have a video. But right now, guys got to keep giving me the question. Do not be afraid to give us the question. Leave the questions in the comments. Ask Matt Mike. It doesn't have to be Atlanta Falcons related. It's NFL related. Like I said, we do all around here. We do it all around here. Um, and like I said, check us out. The Heavy Hitters Live channel. We got our quest of 1K over there. Uh, but with that being said, again, if this channel, um, if you can't understand this is the this this is just us and this is debate, and even in debates, it's shit is gonna get heated and words are gonna be you know stated, and sometimes you're gonna be wrong, sometimes you're gonna be right, but it's all in the spirit of debate. And if you want to take it personally, then maybe this is not the channel for you. All right. So if you don't like debate, if you don't like people calling you out, if you don't like to be called out, this ain't the channel for you. All right. It's just not. Do yourself a favor. If you're sensitive, this ain't the channel for you. We're going to keep doing exactly what we're doing. We're not going to change how we do it. This is the way we've always done it. 
AFN, the Unholy Alliance, the Conglomerate, AFN, 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 the Red Black Event. Head over to uh, Atlanta Falcons Nation to get your tickets. All right, the Red Black Event, July 13th. Telling you guys, we're going to have some fun. We're going to sit down and talk. Hey, probably sit down and have a drink with me. I might be in a drinking mode. I don't drink. I don't smoke like that. But I might drink a little something, have a conversation with people, you know, shake some hands, uh, have that. Uh, and, and watch some women probably shake some ass. Some of y'all dudes probably like seeing other dudes shake ass. Um, just come hang out with us, all right? Whatever your preference is, that's all for you. <laughs> uh, I'm bullshitting y'all. Um, but, all right, for real though, man, continue to support your boy, Mad Mike, man. Look, we good. We good over here. Continue to support us. Uh, Chrissy look. <laughs> Christy Lewis, I appreciate it, T. Lloyd. Uh, but like I said before, man, we're a different breed over here. And a lot of stuff that we say is going to push the envelope. This is how we do it. This is authentic content. We in your face. We brash. And if you ain't meant for it, it ain't the channel for you. But that being said, love you guys. Continue to be blessed. God will bless. I'm out of here.